Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues, this time in a form of a wrap on the Veteran World Championships. It took place in Greece. We go back to the second day of competition, the 13th of October, and we had a New York boy uh, competing in that event. A New York boy, when I say boy, I don't mean boy, I mean man. He was uh, 61 years old on the day of competition. Today, perhaps he feels 62. He joins us from his home in Shoreham, New York. Antonio Peraza. Tony, how are you? I'm fine today. How are you doing, Scott? Well, congratulations, first of all. Um, You are the very epitome of the men and women who made up Team USA. Uh, Last count I saw was like 59 athletes, but uh, it was really a wonderful effort put together by um, a bunch of well-intended athletes to go represent Team USA. Let's talk a bit about how you made the decision first uh, to go over, and then we'll kind of finish up at how you ended up being the champion at 85 kilos in Division F. So tell us how you decided first to to go over and compete. Well, I think it all begins with Scott Contarino, who I met in Vegas uh, for the U.S. Nationals, and he said that I had the ability to to do well at Worlds. He encouraged me to wrestle Although I told him I was injured with a, a groin pull to wrestle it at, at uh, 97 kilos, which I did, and I won. And I thought it was amazing that he encouraged me, even though I was his main competition. He said I would make US, a, uh, the USA team stronger. So I really owe a lot to Scott Contarino, along with uh, my workout partner, John Kokolakis, who also went. And had to wrestle me basically every day, even though he gave up 30, 40 pounds. The event started with a three-hour opening ceremony. You guys were already exhausted for the trip over, which is exceedingly long, going through customs, acclimating to hotel and and time differences and changes that the the body normally doesn't go through. Um, Competition day comes around, and uh, you start to get after it. You had strength at the beginning. How was it? as you work through your deaf competition? Well, we, I actually wrestled three matches before the opening ceremonies. I wrestled at 10 a.m., about 12.30, and then about 4 o'clock. Um, we were going to go back to the, to the hotel, but uh, we thought we might wrestle around 7. Little did we know that the opening ceremonies would go on for three, three and a half hours. Wrestling would begin, and I was at the, the tail end of that, so I ended up running, wrestling about 12.30 a.m. Wow. Um, I was very exhausted. So your first four matches, uh, or in your four matches, you won the first three by pin, right? No, I won the first um, one by Tech Fall 10-0. He ended up becoming the silver medalist. The next three um, that I wrestled, I pinned. Um, the last one was uh, uh, basically a friend of mine, Peter Haig from Chicago. He's a former silver medalist. So it was quite, it was quite uh, eventful, really, when you think about it, because if I recall, was there some injury on the way to uh, Athens? In other words, had you suffered any uh, pre-event injuries during uh, uh, practice and in preparation? Yes. I actually I hurt my back initially in the middle of the competition. I hurt actually both shoulders, and I had a lingering groin injury, but... Uh, um, other wrestlers had way more in, uh, serious injuries than what I had, so I, I saw what they were wrestling with. Steve basically had uh, had fallen off a, sca- a scaffolding, uh, scaffolding at work, caught himself with his arm and tore uh, tendons in his elbow. Wow! And I knew that uh, Contarino was wrestling with that injury, and uh, I, and I was not going to complain. You were doing a lot of. Um... And when I say you, you and your team, we're doing a lot of encouraging uh, of each other. There's a certain type of, of mentality, a certain type of competitor uh, that gets after you. hadn't wrestled for 10 years competitively since prior to the Veteran Nationals. Is that correct? That's correct. What, 2005, what, I, I won the, uh, I think I won the freestyle. And what drove you to, to get back into competition? Was it, was it surely some people wrestle or compete for health? Other do it for the pure pride in, in, in being able to do so. Well, I think the biggest influence was uh, Scott, um, not Scott, I'm sorry, was John Kokolakis. He was 40 years old. He was of Greek heritage. 
and he wanted to go to Greece and he wanted someone to go with him. So um, kind of made a pact that we we're going to work hard and that we we're going to try to do this. And um, we made it happen. I love that. I love that story. I, I got to ask you, how supportive was your family in this endeavor? I know you have two, uh, uh, actually three kids, but uh, two that are in college at Cornell University, uh, high level uh, students. Uh, neither of which wrestled, which I, th I think is uh, it's very much like my my boys, uh, neither of which uh -huh. wrestled. But one is a concert-level pianist. The other is uh, an, a, an actor. Uh, and they're both going to school for his uh -huh. biology? That's right. Uh, Michael's uh, bioengineering. And Ma Matthew hasn't decided yet. He might, uh, might go to med school, but right now he's a biology major at Cornell. But a concert pianist and an actor... Uh, and the son of a wrestler, you were a 32-year veteran of the public schools uh -huh. there in uh, in New York, teaching kids for 32 years. Uh, I mean, you've literally given your life to the youth of America, and I and I just I love the fact that you're still uh, of a competitive mind at 61 years old, and you're not done working. You're still working. That's right. I, I have a, a small computer business. And I, I still uh, I walk into the three workout places that I that I uh, frequent, and I coach whoever will allow me to. I mean, from four years uh, old to like twenty two years old, it's fun for me to uh, uh, to coach. So the day after I got back, I made sure that I went down to the workout <laughs> area, and uh, it was nice. Everyone clapped. The following day, though, it was like any other day where basically we were all showing moves and working out. And I just want to make sure that I hadn't changed, you know, basically. But wasn't that, wasn't it terrific that, that uh, the three places you work out, uh, two of which I think uh, gave you the respect that uh, your results deserved, what you put into it, you got out of it. Had you finished silver or bronze, I'm sure they would have given you the same type of respect. Uh, but a gold medal performance, these guys absolutely loved it, didn't they? Yeah, they enjoyed it. has to warm your heart. I know that uh, uh, your your kids, we talked a little bit about this, uh, uh, being supportive, uh, understanding of dad's drive. Then you had friends. You had friends that sent you checks helping to pay for the journey. Uh, that you knew oh, in your heart you had to make. Can you talk about that experience, having those friends rally around you? Yeah, my best friend, uh, Joe Galea, his brother, I think, uh, wrestled for Iowa State, was second in the uh, – he won nationals in 1976. He and I were both uh, national finalists in 1975. He sent out uh, an email to the alumni. The alumni responded, and uh, – for two weeks, every day, I got a check, $100 here, $50 there. <laughs> and, and you know, when you have two kids in college and you're trying to, you know, go to Greece to, to support, you, you know, wrestle for your country, it was very, very nice. Yeah, Joe's a terrific guy. I know him well. Um, I, I, I will ask you about uh, dropping down to 85 because it's not your normal competitive weight as of late. Um, how was that drop? <laughs> And uh, how was the build back up? Did it affect your energy? Uh, well, I, I, I got down about a month before competition. Um, it took me about 40 days, basically working out twice, sometimes three times a day. Um, and then uh, initially I only wrestled three times a day. But after Washington, D.C., I would say in the middle of July, I went to six times a day. And uh, my weight naturally came down. It was nice. I got down from about 206, 207, and hung out about 192. And every once in a while, I would hit the 187, and then I, I could uh, I could hydrate back up. And if I did it that way, my energy level stayed stayed pretty good. So when I hit Greece, I um, I was like just two pounds over, and I was feeling pretty good. Not bad. And you, and that was a 40 plus day. Uh... Uh, process so you did it the right way yes i did it nice and slow and eating the right foods and that's i think that's if 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 we teach our young athletes anything is how to manage weight so you're within 
you know, X number of pounds of competition so you don't, so your body doesn't suffer and your mind doesn't suffer. There's a whole lot of uh-huh. mind game, especially at 61, yeah? Yes, and um, I'm blessed. Um, uh, one of my partners who went to Vegas, he had to have his hip resurfaced. Um, John uh, hurt a shoulder and, it, and his, uh, his wrist. Um, the biggest, and I know, I know we lost at least one uh, world champion uh, uh, to injury, maybe two, I believe, before, um, before Grace. Well, Mark, or Mark Goldman was the recognized team leader. There are other leaders for Team USA that, that you guys rallied around and rallied around you, uh, including Chris. Can you talk to us about Chris? Well, t- for me, uh, Chris Brown is the spiritual leader of our team. He basically kept everyone motivated. I, I could tell that maybe he wasn't 100%, but he still went out. He actually missed his flight um, to come to Greece and got to the weigh-in about an hour into the weigh-in, weigh-in. so he had to be dealing with severe uh, jet lag, yet he you know, he sucked it up and he wrestled. Jamie Cassa worked with me exclusively in uh, Washington, D.C., got head-butted in Washington, D.C., had to go to the hospital, get seven to eight stitches in his eye. So, uh, looked like he got head-butted again in Greece and still uh, wrestled top 187 in his gold medal match. Um, a guy by the name of, uh, I believe, John Scott Taylor, came up to me and said, um, you could be a gold medalist. And I just kind of laughed at him. He said, you're crazy. And he said, no, you, I see the way you move. I see your determination. And he says, you could do well. You could do very well in Greece. And he said, the first thing, Tony, he says, you got to believe it. And um, I'll tell you the truth. I did not believe it when I left there. But as my training improved and um, my weight came down, I, I started to think that maybe there was a shot. So your confidence went up as your weight came down. You're talking, of course, about John Taylor of Virginia Beach, Virginia, Division F, 58 kilos. He, he uh, won bronze uh, for his uh, his trouble. Um, and I really like the fact that he was encouraging you. Saw something in you, perhaps, that you hadn't seen in a number of years. Let's face it, you were a great wrestler at uh, Division uh, Were you at You were at SUNY... Sonny Potsdam? Potsdam, right. Oh, for its uh, Crane School of Music. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Your son became a concert pianist, and and, uh, you were a pianist early on, uh, playing a a fine piano yourself, but uh, wrestling in a music school is not necessarily the direct uh, connection to an NCAA title. No, that's true. Um, We basically had two NCAA champions in in the history of Potsdam. Potsdam now has... uh, uh, lost wrestling. Um, I was basically the second um, NCA champion there. Wow. So um, you know, but I was a bio major. You know, taking things like organic chemistry and my sophomore year in college and pulling about twenty pounds. This is the way it was. But um, I think it's amazing. I, I we I want to list off something, and and you and I have been talking about this and recognizing those that did because they could and urged on by others who perhaps didn't, but it was because of a stiff competition. This is one of the largest uh, gathering of athletes of of age that uh, have competed on the world stage in large part because of its location, but perhaps the veteran world championships are starting to find a popular footing and a goal where people are going to uh, look forward to competition. Uh, the U.S. had four world silver medalists on Tuesday, including Steve Turgeon of South Windsor, Connecticut, Division E, 58 kilos. Keith Stagg joined him out of Washington Township, New Jersey, Division E, 63 kilos. Uh, Hedgie Nelson of Kettle Falls, Washington, Division E, 69. And uh, Steve Cotterino out of Palmetto, Florida, Division F, 97 kilos. Uh, and Stag, by the way, had a 3-1 three, three, record on their way to uh, his silver, while Turgeon, Nelson, and Conorino finished the day 2-1 records. Uh, you guys had a bronze medalist uh, on the uh, on the day as well, Dan Lovell out of Grand Rapids, uh, Minnesota, uh, Kevin Hengel out of uh, Modesto, California, Bruce Moe, Hillsboro, North Dakota, 
Keith Ellis, Vacaville, California, John Taylor, Virginia Beach, you mentioned John earlier, and Zelik Ziegelbaum out of Sandpoint, New York, Division F. Um, there's so many people, but we have to also recognize the fact that this is the first year for women. How about that? You guys were breaking ground even as you competed. Yes, it was nice to have the women there. I'm not sure if the women had uh, um, anyone in their weight classes, but... Uh, you know, it's it's tough for women, and uh, the fact that they spent the money, they trained, and, the, and the, that they went um, is admirable. Hmm. I, I can only tell you that so many of these stories that we've been able to tell, and so many of your teammates joined us in the, uh, the weeks leading up to Athens, if only, you know, to increase excitement, awareness, uh, offer some PR, some publicity. Uh, I was energized as well. Uh, during that time, you guys were preparing for the two months prep. Uh, I was I was amping up, you know, 56 uh, years old. I was amping up my workout schedules. Uh, uh, it's almost like a, um, well, you guys were motivating me too. Uh, where do you stand right now as far as, as wrestling goes besides coaching? Or do, you, or do you plan on continuing competition? Yes, Um I also have a, a, a small uh, side uh, hobby as acting, so I'm actually I'm doing two things this week. I'm helping out with a production of uh, 42nd Street, my local theater, and three other days I'll be attending those three gyms, and I'll be tutoring at the three gyms that uh, basically let me at, attend for free. Are, so you gonna a, try to, are you a singer as well? Well... I have sang on the stage, but I wouldn't call myself a singer. <laughs> I was in something called I Love You, You're Perfect Now. Now change. change. <laughs> I had to sing with a teddy bear on the edge of the stage. <laughs> and I think ma, most of the, the rats in the basement were committing suicide. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, being part of the cast or crew of 42nd Street, that's a big cast. No, I'm not a cast. I'm just... Uh, I, I was taking, uh, before I left for Greece, I was taking uh, tap dance lessons. Was, I've been taking them for about two years, but, uh, I, you know, this show is only go, going on in about two weeks, so I'm basically just going to be stage crew. Hey, stage crew, the men in black, women in black. Uh, without them, the show does not go on. Tony Perez has been our guest. Tony, we would be remiss if we didn't ask you who you'd like to thank, who you'd like to recognize. And I know you're not going to hit everybody, but coming off the top of your head, who are some of those that uh, you'd like to give some public recognition to? Uh, number one would be uh, uh, Steve Contarino, Bruce Moe, Ivan, uh, uh, the Russian who coached me in my senior, uh, my final bout, uh, John Scott Taylor. Uh, Joe Gallia, a college coach, Neil Neil Johnson from Sunny Potsdam, and um, John Kokolakis, my, tra my training partner. I mean, he really put up with a lot, and, uh, you know, he's really got a piece of that gold medal. You know, I, I'm going to paraphrase you, and pardon me if I get any of this wrong, and feel free to add to it once uh, I've com completed. In saying that I beat a world champion in the process, you were able to go to the world championships to represent your country, your team, your family, coaches, and workout partners. And you did so with a great style and class. And uh, I, for one, am so very proud of Team USA and the effort they put forward this year. Uh, what a group of men and women. I'm, I'm just so proud of you guys. I, it, it, I, I, I said it on television. You've got me grinning from ear to ear, and I love it. It was an extraordinary experience, and uh, hopefully I'll get to go back uh, and represent the country in Poland and or Finland. That would my, be cool. My next uh, goal is to start to wrestle uh, Greco-Roman. I haven't wrestled Greco-Roman since, I think, 2003, but uh, that's my new goal. According to the UWW website, again, this is UWW website, Team USA brought the largest delegation with more than 120 entrants, followed by Iran, who had 100, Turkey with 90, and Russia with 60. Uh, other countries, of course, competed as well, Japan and, and so many other great countries. So we want to we wanna welcome and uh, encourage all of our, our athletes to continue wrestling. This is a sport that knows no age boundaries and embraces all, male and female. And um, it's and, just, and probably, I'm sorry, Scott, 
probably the best example of that is uh, Terry Harris, who um, I took, got my picture taken with in Greece. At 72 years old, he partitioned into the tournament two years ago. He, he said, uh, they said no. He wrote emails. He wrote letters. Um, he said, you know what? I'm going to make a significant donation to Feeler. They said, okay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and at 72 years old, and he's on Facebook. I mean, he's on YouTube. You can see it. He won a world championship for the United States. How special. So he, he was the most interesting and phenomenal guy I met there. So, you know, at, at 72 years old, um, he's already, uh, you know how you change levels? Well, he's already changed level as a matter of fact. But, man, he's still got strength, doesn't he? The whole of me, man, and I'm saying he could be stronger than I am. I'm, he's an amazing person. Well, I want to thank Mark Goldman, uh, Jason Goldman, and the balance of Team USA. I know we've not hit everybody, but uh, there's a ton of inspiration here. Richard Jensen, et cetera, that uh, little Mark over at Flow, and you know, the guys that went over and really did a terrific job and represented all of us. And uh, I hope we get a chance to do it again in Poland. And I hope I'm right there along with you. How about that? Yeah, that would be fun. Tony, my best to uh, the boys uh, as you continue your gift back to the sport, that which you got. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate the time today. You've been in the Nike hot seat. As I told you, the Nike hot seat normally is warm and inviting. How was it for you? It's been it's been wonderful. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Just to say thanks to the people, so many people who helped me. Well, you're absolutely terrific. And Tony, thanks for the 32 years you gave the kids of uh, the schools where you, you taught. Uh, it takes a whole lot of patience to be a teacher these days. And I think you exhibited uh, a great deal of patience in doing so. And, and we thank you for that. Thank you very much. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Tony Prez has been our guest, 61-year-old superstar who won a world gold medal recently in Athens, Greece. It was Tuesday, the 13th of October, a day that will go down in the history books as a great day for Team USA and surely for Tony Peraza. Antonio, thank you. Have a great day in Shoreham. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>